شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة والملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقسط لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره <تصفيق> ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد uh, so we're at the end of the book inshallah <coughs> oh lillah alhamd and today inshallah we'll complete it يقول الشيخ محمد uh, عبد الوهاب رحمه الله عليه رحمه واسعه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد الله مغفر لشيخنا وحفظ ورفع قدره للمسلمين أجمعين أما بعد قال الشيخ والناس وإذا ماتوا يبعثون قال الشيخ رحمه الله قال الشيخ رحمه الله تعالى أحسن الله عليكم قال الشيخ رحمه الله تعالى والناس إذا ماتوا يبعثون والدليل قوله تعالى منها خلقناكم وفيها نعيدكم ومنها نخرجكم تارة أخرى وقوله تعالى والله أنبتكم من الأرض نباتا ثم يعيدكم فيها ويخرجكم إخراجا وبعد البعث محاسبون ومج ومجزيون بأعمالهم ودليل قوله تعالى ليجزي الذين أساءوا بما عملوا ويجزي الذين أحسنوا بالحسنة الآية ومن كذب بالبعث ومن كذب بالبعث كفر والدليل قوله تعالى زعم الذين كفروا أن لن يبعثوا قل بلى وربي لتبعثن ثم لتنبؤن بما عملتم وذلك على الله يسير حسبك الآية the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, <coughs> as we said last week, we ended the kalam, <coughs> all of the words of the Sheikh regarding the third principle or the third foundation, which was Ma'rifatun Nabiyyikum, knowing the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the last thing we took was Waddalilu Ala Mawtihi Inna Kamayyitun wa Innahum Mayyitun, which shows that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has passed away. Tayyib. The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, now <coughs> until the end of the kitab, in the next few lines, he'll talk about other issues which are general. Some of them are related to Yawm Al-Qiyamah, believing in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Some of them are related, related to the ruling, <coughs> ruling with the Sharia of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. يقول الشيخ والناس إذا ماتوا يبعثون And if the people die, when the people die, they shall be resurrected. This is connected to which, found they, uh, which pillar of the pillars of Iman? Al-Iman bi al qiyamah Why? Because everything that happens after the death of a person Everything that happens after the death of a person Is considered Yawm al qiyamah So as soon as a person passes away And they're put into the grave The Hayatul Barzakh That is considered the hereafter Then when they're raised Yawm al qiyamah That is also considered Yawm al qiyamah وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى And the dalil is the verse of Allah Jalla wa ala مِنْهَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ From it we have created you. وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ يعني the earth. وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ And to it you shall be returned. وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةٌ أُخْرَى And yet again and once again you shall be raised. طيب. وَاللَّهُ أَنْبَتَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ النَّبَاتَ Allah Jalla wa ala created you from dust of earth ثُمَّ يُعِيدُكُمْ فِيهَا وَيُخْرُجُكُمْ إِخْرَاجَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause you to enter into the earth again and then to rise from it يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ So this verse and the verse before it both show that, uh, that, that Bani Adam shall die and then they will be raised وَبَعْدَ الْبَعْثِ And after the ba'th, after being resurrected Muhasabuna ayhum muhasabun. Then they will be held to account. Wa majziyuna bi a'malihim. And they will be rewarded according to their actions. They will be rewarded according to their actions. Now, these rewards, it can be rewarded with khayr, goodness, and it could be rewarded with punishment. Al jaza, it could be that they are being rewarded with al jannah and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us amongst them. Or that it could mean that they, be, they are being rewarded for their evil deeds, meaning they will be punished. قال جل وعلا, Allah says, وَالدَّلِينَ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى لِيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once they are raised, these, يعني بني آدم, 
Then there is those who did well or those who did evil, they will be rewarded. Those that did evil, whether it was kufr, whether it was shirk, whether it was ma'asi, whether it was bid'ah. بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward those good doers. Those good doers who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to <coughs> the tawheed of the messenger, tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that husna is the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِالْبَعْثِ كَفَرَ And whomsoever disbelieves in the resurrection, يوم القيامة, has fallen into kufr. They have disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something we studied when we were talking about the pillars of Iman. Whereby if any one of these pillars of Iman, that are how many in number? Six. If any one of those pillars is missing, then the person is outside of the fold of Islam. As the Sheikh says, وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِالْبَعْثِ كَفَرَ So you can also say, وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِاللَّهِ كَفَرَ وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ Whoever disbelieves in Allah, he is a kafir. وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِالرُّسُلْ فَهُوَ كَاذِبْ Whoever disbelieves in the prophets is a kafir. وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِالْكُتُبْ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ So all you would have to do is change بِالْبَعْثِ to all of the other six pillars of Iman. And that's something we studied already. وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse in Surah Al-Taqabun is refuting those who claim that they will not be resurrected. قَالَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى زَعَمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَلَّنْ يُبْعَثُوا Those who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala زَعَمُوا They claimed. And الزَعَم is when you claim something which is a lie. الزَعَم For example, if someone, مثلا, if someone says he's a prophet, then we say زَعَمَ أَنَّهُ النَّبِي زَعَمَ أَنَّهُ النَّبِي He's claiming to be a prophet. Meaning obviously he isn't a prophet. So they claim... That they will not be raised. قُلْ بَلَى وَرَبِّي Say, O oh Muhammad, by my Lord, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَتُبْعَثُنَّ ثُمَّ لَتُبْعَثُنَّ That's tawkid. يعني certainly you'll be raised and certainly you'll be raised. بِمَا عَمِلْتُمْ You'll be raised and you'll be rewarded or punished according to your actions. وَذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرُ And that is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah jalla wa ala, it was easy for him to create Bani Adam from the beginning. And it's easy for Allah jalla wa ala to also create Bani Adam or to resurrect them and put life back into them. Yaqulu <coughs> Shaykh rahimahullah wa So, Shaykh, Hassanallahu alaykum wa arsa wa qala rahimahullah. وأرسل الله جميع الرسل مبشرين ومنذرين ودليل قوله تعالى وأرسل الله جميع الرسل مبشرين ومنذرين والدليل قوله تعالى رسلا مبشرين ومنذرين لئلا يكون للناس على الله حجة بعد الرسل وأولهم نوح عليه السلام وآخرهم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ودليل على أن أول أولهم نوح عليه السلام قوله تعالى إن أوحينا إليك كما أوحينا إلى نوح والنبيين من بعده وكل أمة بعث الله وكل أمة بعث الله إليها رسولا من نوح إلى محمد يأمرهم بعبادة الله وحده وينهاهم عن عبادة الطاغوت ودليل قوله تعالى ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن عبد الله وجتنب الطاغوت الآية حسبك الله جل وعلا says another مسألة that we've already studied وأرسل الله جميع الرسل Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all of the rusul. Mubashirina wa munzirin. Ay haluhum kada. Their hal is mubashirina. They are ones that give glad tidings. Wa munzirina. And they are ones that give warning. So they give glad tidings to whom? To the believers. To those who take Allah jalla wa ala as a lord. Those who say la ilaha illallah. Muhammadun rasulullah. And take... The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a Prophet and are pleased of Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And who are they warning? A warning to? They are a warning to those who disbelieve in Allah Jalla wa Ala. They are a warning and giving a warning to those who disbelieve in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The verse of Allah is the Dalil. Rusulan, messengers. Mubashirin wa Mundirin. Who are giving glad tidings 
and who are given warning. لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةِ So that there's no proof with the people upon against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بعد الرسل after the messengers have been sent to them. Allah says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ الرَّسُولَ We are not ones, Allah Jalla wa'ala says that Allah will not punish until he sends messengers. And that is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the just, just uh, the, 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 the adl of Allah, the just of Allah subhanahu, justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah Jalla wa'ala sends messengers to warn us. And these messengers are the wasaid, they're the intermediaries between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they are the wasaid, they are those that are in between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For we cannot worship Allah Jalla wa'ala except for these messengers, except via these messengers. And we have to believe in every single one of them as we studied in the pillars of Al-Iman. Nuh, And the very first of these anbiya, or these messengers is Nuh. The very first one is Nuh alayhi salam. And the last of them is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> and the evidence that Nuh is the first messenger, or na'am, is the verse of Allah jalla wa'ala, inna uhayna ilayka, verily, O oh Muhammad, we have revealed to you كما أوحينا إلى نوح as we revealed to Nuh where is the محل الشاهد والنبيين من بعده as we revealed to Nuh عليه السلام نعم as we revealed to Nuh and the prophets after him so Allah سبحانه وتعالى tells us that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the last messenger in the Quran Allah جل وعلا also tells us that the first messenger was Nuh عليه السلام also there's another hadith in which the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن الناس يأتون إلى نوح فيقولون له يعني يوم القيامة when the nations are confused when the people are confused and they want to ask the prophets to ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to start the reckoning not to put them into Jannah or Jahannam, la. to start the reckoning, every messenger will go to, or every nation will keep going to different prophets. And every single messenger will make an excuse and say, it will excuse himself from asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having this intercession. And that is the shafa'atul uzma that is specific to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So in that, when they go to Nuh alayhi salam, the people will say to him, فَيَقُولُونَ لَهُ They will say to him, أَنْتَ أَوَّلُ رَسُولٍ Verily, you are the very first Rasulin أَرْسَلَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إِلَى أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ You are the very first messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to, Allah, to the people. وَكُلُّ أُمَّةٍ بَعَثَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهَا رَسُولًا And every nation, or every, uh, every nation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a prophet to them, a messenger. مِن نُوحٍ إِلَى مُحَمَّدٍ what do these anbiya do? What do these prophets do? Yaqul al-Shaykh, he says, Ya'muruhum bi'ibadatillahi wahda. That anbiya, or the, those anbiya, those prophets, Ya'muruhum, they are commanding them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Wa yanhahum an ibadati ta'ghut. And they are warning them against and prohibiting them from worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ta'qut. And the ta'qut is what we shall see, everything that is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the little qawluhu ta'ala, and the evidence is the verse of Allah jalla wa'ala, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَجْتَنِبُ الْطَاقُوتِ Allah says that he sent every single messenger, and every single messenger that he sent to these umam, these nations, every one of them was saying, أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ الْطَاقُوتِ Worship Allah Jalla wa ala and stay away from the tawaqeet. Stay away from the tawaqeet. Those that are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fadl. Assalamu alaikum. Qal. Wa aftarad Allah ala jami'u ala jami'u ala ibadi al-kufra bil tawaqeet wal iman billah. Qal ibn al-qayyim rahimahu Allah ta'ala. Al-tawaqeet al-tawaqeet مات الطاغوت ما تجاوز به العبد حده من معبود أو متبوع أو مطاع والطواغيت كثيرة رؤوسهم ورؤوسهم خمسة إبليس لعنه الله ومنع, ومنع عبد وهو راض ومن دعا الناس إلى عبادة نفسه ومن ادعى شيئا من علم الغيب ومن حكم بغير ما أنزل الله والدليل قوله تعالى لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى وهذا معنى لا, وهذا معنى لا إله إلا الله وفي الحديث رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذروة سنامه الجهاد في سبيل الله 
والله والله اعلم وصلى الله على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يقول ذا الشيخ سيز رحمه الله جل رحمه الله تعالى وافترض الله الله سبحانه وتعالى ميد واجب على جميع العباد that Allah Jalla wa Ala has made it wajib upon all of his servants Al-Kufra bi taghut He has made it wajib upon them to disbelieve and reject Al-Kufr Al-Taghut To disbelieve in and to reject all tawaghit Everything that is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And everything that the people glorify And uh, hold sacred besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Associating partners with him and he has also made it wajib upon them to have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these two go hand in hand. Al-Iman Billah and disbelief in everything that is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Remember when we were studying La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah consists of affirming and negating, a negation. Negating all gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Negating all gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Affirming the ibadah for Allah jalla wa ala alone. That is the meaning of la ilaha illallah. Then the shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions a statement of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah Ibn Qayyim Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah alayhi. He says, at taghut so this is a definition that Ibn Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi gave to Taqut. He says, مَا تَجَاوَزَ بِهِ الْعَبْدُ حَدَّهُ Everything that the servant transgresses and takes beyond its boundaries. So مثلا, if, if, if we have a cup, linguistically, if we have a cup and we pour water into it, and then we don't stop, we just carry on, carry on, and then it, it's going to spill out. ضَغَ الْمَاء, they say. ضَغَ الْمَاء so that is the linguistical meaning. Like in the Sheikh is saying now, everything that the servant, the Abd, transgresses in its rights, then and passes it beyond its boundaries, then that is considered a taqut. And he doesn't stop there. He says, Min ma'budin. From those that are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O matbu'in. Or those that are followed besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or those that are followed. Or muta'in, or those that are obeyed, that those that people obey. So, for example, a shaitan, as the Sheikh will say, is a taqut. These idols that people worship, besides Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, are tawaqit. Those uh, evil scholars who make halal that which is haram and make haram that which is halal and do istihlal, make things halal and make things haram, they are also tawaqit. أو متبوع or a person who is followed, a person who is followed that contradicts the Sunnah of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, such as the Shuyukh of the Sufiya, where you see them dancing in the Masjid and doing handstands in the Masjid, and then they start to uh, make sujood to their so-called Shuyukh and their so-called Oliya, where they're making sujood to them, and to the extent that they, they sometimes believe that they are more sacred and more holy than the messengers. Then the messengers, to the extent that, to the extent that if they were to go to or the the the, the, the those people that are the mushrikun that associate our partners of Allah Jalla wa Ala, if you tell them to take an oath, and they know they're lying, they don't mind saying, oh, "Wallahi, I did not do it," even though they know they're lying. Lakin, if you say to them, or if they say to each other, "Swear by the wali in the grave," they won't. Why? Because they fear this. They fear this so-called wali. This person in the grave more than they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a reality. O muta'in, likewise, or a person who is obeyed in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who, for example, calls to kufr, whether he's a magician or araf or those that claim to know the unseen. So all of these come under tawaqit. And the Sheikh says, What tawaqit wa kathira? They are many. They are many. وَرُؤُوسُهُمْ خَمْسَةً And their heads are five. Iblis لَعَنَهُ اللَّهِ Iblis is the very first one. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ O Bani Adam, has Allah Jalla wa Ala not warned you and told you about Iblis being a warner, being an enemy unto us? 
Allah Jalla wa Ala commands us to not worship him. La ta'budu shaytan. His, his ibadah or the ibadah of shaytan is what Allah tells us do not worship the shaytan. What is his worship? Obeying him. Obeying him and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Iblis la'anahu Allah. Wa man ubida wa huwa radin. That's the second one from the examples that the Sheikh mentions. Whoever is worshipped and he is radin, he is pleased with this worship. So that person is a taghut. So Fir'aun, mathalan, worshipped besides Allah, he is a taghut. The shuyukh of the Sufiya, they are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are pleased with it. So they are also tawaghit. This part of wahuwa radin, he is pleased with it, or they are pleased with it. Who does it exclude? Isa alayhi salam, Maryam alayhi salam, the angels, and anyone else who is a righteous person <coughs> who is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can't say Isa is a ta'ghut alayhi salam. Isa is not a ta'ghut. Why? Because he did not command them to worship him, nor did he, is he pleased with it. وَمَنْ دَعَ النَّاسَ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ النَّفْسِهِ also the person who calls the people to worship him. That is also, or that person is also a taqut. And whomsoever claims to know the unseen is also a taqut. And the unseen is of two types. There is the al ghayb al mutlaq. Ghayb, which is mutlaq. It is unseen and no one knows of it. For example, when Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be. Whether the person is going into Jannah or Jahannam. Whether a person shall accept Islam or not. Then there is something called Al-Ghayb Al-Nisbi. Ghayb which is relative, it is partial. So that type, it's possible that Bani Adam can have some sort of knowledge regarding it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has facilitated it for them. A simple example, when a woman is expecting and she's about five months, you're able to tell the gender of the baby, right? طيب. Can we say now that these these doctors, they know the ilmul ghayb? لا. Why? Because this is not complete ilmul ghayb. Allah Jalla wa Ala has given them the ability to see with the evidence that if they, if they wasn't using these machines, ultra scan machines and so on, they would not be able to tell. So they can't look at a woman and say, you're carrying a boy or you're carrying a girl without these machines. Also, things like the weather. The weather, they can't Allah has given them the ability to guess what the weather will be. So when you hear that they're saying that there's a heat wave coming, don't think they know the ilm al-ghayb. It's something that Allah has given them the ability to know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't allow Muhammad, our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, <coughs> to see the ilm al-ghayb. وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمَ الْغَيْبَ لَسْتَكْثَوْتُ مِنَ الْغَيْبَ وَمَا مَسْنِي الصُّوءُ And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, if I knew the ilm al ghayb then I would have been plentiful in bringing good to myself and no harm would have touched me. If the Messenger sallallahu and there are so many incidents in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that show that he did not know the ilm al ghayb For example, Ghazwat al Badr, Ghazwat al Uhud, when he left the archers on the what? And what did he tell them? Stay there, do not move. They did move. If the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew the unseen, the Ilm al Ghaim, he wouldn't have put them there in the first place. Why? Because he would have known that they're going to move. Also, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Sihir was performed on him, magic was performed on him, he did not know what to do. The angels came to him and sat beside him, and when he heard them talking, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, Aisha radiallahu anha, radiallahu anhuma. When the munafiqun accused her of al fawahish, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa did not know. 
until the revelation came down. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not know the Ilm Al-Ghayb. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a Rasul, he's a Messenger. فَلَا يُكَذَّبْ He's not to be blind, we have to believe in him. And he is a Abd, فَلَا يُعْبَدْ And he is a servant of Allah, فَلَا يُعْبَدْ He's not to be worshipped. So the Sufiya and those people who go to Ghulubi with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or go past the Messenger beyond his boundaries, where they give him something from the lordships of Allah Jalla wa Ala, they are misguided. They will tell you that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is alive and he can answer my du'as. And he can hear my du'a. And I'm doing tawassul to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To the extent that when you see them, they're in Medina. The Qibla is that way and they face that way. They face the Qibla, the grave of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that person has truly been deprived. They're in the masjid of the Prophet and they're not facing Allah Jalla wa Ala making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're making dua to the Messenger sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi. وَمَنْ حَكَمَ بِغَيْرِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ And whomsoever rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. That person is also a da'ut. However, ruling, what does it mean to الحكم بغير ما أنزل الله? What does it mean? It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a kitab, the Qur'an, صح? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also revealed to us the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To rule by what other, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed is that we go back to the Quran and the sunnah for every single thing in our lives. And we take the ruling from it. Whether it's within our homes, whether it's within ourselves, whether it's the governing or the law that we govern the land with. In every aspect of our lives, we go back to the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we have a quarrel, an argument with someone, we have to go back to the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what is wajib upon the Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blamed those who do not rule by the sharia of Allah. Uh, those who do not rule by the sharia of Allah, Allah calls them kafirun. Disbelievers. Allah calls them fasiqun. Uh, those who are fasiqin, rebellious, rebellious against Allah Jalla wa'ala. Those who are zalimun, those who are oppressors. So that is the wajib upon, or that is what is wajib upon every single Muslim. However, if it doesn't take place, if a person doesn't rule by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, then it doesn't mean that they are automatically kuffar. That they are automatically out of the fold of Islam. And this is a very important issue. However, we're not going to delve too much into it. Because, inshallah, when we're studying the waqid al-Islam, Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdullah, Muhammad bin Abdullah, rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions this. And we shall study it over there. This is, يعني, we're studying Usul al now. And Usul al is summarized. So it's not from wisdom to go into every single masala in detail. Lakin, there are, there are, Situations when it is disbelief Where it can take the person out of the fold of Islam For example if a person says That man made law That contradicts the kitab of Allah Is better than the kitab of Allah Man made law Democracy is better than Islam for example If anyone says that then they are kafir Or if anyone says that the kitab for example of Allah The law of Allah is backward And it has taken us to the stone ages then again, that is kufr and that takes a person out of Islam. If the person says that it is permissible to rule with the sharia of Allah, but it is also permissible to rule with other than the sharia of Allah, like democracy, then it is also fine. That person is also a non-Muslim. Also, if a person changes the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and claims what he's changed it to is the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is also disbelief. Then there are, or then there's another situation where a person believes that the law of Allah is the best. And there is no law like the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he believes that it is obligatory upon ruling, upon every Muslim to rule himself with the kitab of Allah. However, due to desires, worldly desires and shahawat, he leaves it off and he doesn't rule by the sharia of Allah. That person is not a kafir. That person is not a kafir. And that's the one Abdullah ibn Abbas عنه, said about kufr and dunu kufr. Kufr, which is below the major kufr. And this is extremely point, important, this point, because 
you will hear those ignorant individuals on social media, the takfiriyun and so on, those who declare Muslims to be kuffar, those who say there are no Muslims, no Muslim lands, there are no Muslim rulers, they will say that they are ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And they say they are tawaqeet. So according to them, everything is a tawaqeet. Like in those people are people that we should stay away from and do not be fooled by them. Do not be fooled by them. Whether they are called Al-Qaeda, whether they are called Al-Shabaab, whether they are called um, ISIS or Boko, whatever they are called, regardless of their names. And even if they don't associate themselves or affiliate themselves with any of these deviant sects, if they have their belief, then they are also upon their methodology. If they are upon their belief, then they are also upon their methodology. It's not, it is not necessary that they go to them and pledge allegiance to them from there. And that is extremely important. And there are many youngsters, many shabab like yourselves, who go to these so-called war zones believing that there's a khilafah. <clears throat> believing that there's a khilafah. And when they get there, they're astonished to find that these people are fusaq. And then they are killing and that they are killing innocent people and so on and so forth. And then they get innocent Muslim young women and take them as jihadi brides. All of that is in contradiction to the kitab of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you all need to be aware. What dalilu qawluhu ta'ala and the evidence for what has just preceded is the verse of Allah. La ikraha fi dini qad tabayyana rushdu min al ghay فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُوَةِ الْبُثْقَ Allah says, جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينَ There is no compulsion in the religion. A person doesn't need to be compelled to enter into the religion of Islam. Why? قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ رُشْتُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ The true guidance has been made clear. The true guidance has been made clear and distinct from the falsehood. قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ رُشْتُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ so there is no need to force anyone. Anyone that has a sound mind will enter into Al-Islam willingly and happy and wants being pleased. Then Allah Jalla wa'ala says, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ And this is the Mahalu Shahid. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ Whomsoever disbelieves in the Tawaqeet وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ And he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah say? فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى He has held on to and grasped on to the firmest of handholds. He has held on to the firmest of places, which is the kalima of la ilaha illallah. The shaykh says, وَهَذَا مَعْنُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And that is the meaning of la ilaha illa Allah. وَفِي الْحَدِيثِ And in the hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ The head of the affair is al-Islam. وَعَمُودُهُ الصَّلَاةِ And its pillar is al-salah. وَالذِّرْوَةُ سَنَامِهِ الْجِهَادُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And its highest peak and its highest part is الْجِهَادُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Striving and fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you need to know if, the kitab, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned jihad, then it is the jihad that is correct, that meets its conditions. Not the jihad that these shayateen claim, whereby they kill innocent people, blow up innocent people, run cars to busy streets or markets and claim to be fi sabilillah then the sheikh says wallahu a'lam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama then the messenger or then the sheikh rahimahullah he ends the kitab off by sending peace and salutations upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon the family of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab. May Allah jalla wa ala grant him the highest rank of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise him with the Nabiyina wa Siddiqina wa Shuhada. <coughs> um, Naam, taib. So what I want you to write, Bihamdillah, tamma hadha sharhu fi masjid al-Nawawi. Alhamdulillah, this sharh has completed, we've completed this sharh in the Masjid or Masjid the Nawawi Layla Tasa Ashara Min Shawal the nineteenth of Shawal Am the year Alf Wa Agba Mia Wa Agba the year one thousand four hundred and forty four Ba the Hijrat in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the Hijrah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wahia Layla to Sabt 
and it is a Saturday night. He said to the night according to the Muslim calendar. You know how Ramadan, <coughs> if it's Ramadan tomorrow we pray Tarawih tonight, right? In Islam, the night precedes the day. And this is in correspondence with the 20th of May 2022. Also, I want you to write a few lines <coughs> of poetry that Imam Shafi'i said, rahmatullahi alayhi. And the reason why I'm asking you to write this at the end of the book is so that you don't think now that I've finished a book, I am Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And I can go out and refute people because I've got so much knowledge. And I don't need to be humble because I've studied a book. The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Yaquli Imam Shafi'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Akhi Lantana Lil Ilma Illa Bisitatin, Saumbika and Tafsiliha Bibayani. Yaqi, I'll, I'll interpret it in a second. The Kaun, Wahirsun, Wajtihadun, Wabulratun, the Kaun, Wahirsun, Wajtihadun, Wabulratun, وَالصُّحْبَةُ أُسْتَادٍ وَطُولُ الزَّمَانِ وَالصُّحْبَةُ أُسْتَادٍ وَطُولُ الزَّمَانِ I will repeat. يقول إمام شافع رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة أخي لن تنال العلم أخي لن تنال العلم إلا بستة so you will not my brother you will not attain knowledge except with six سَأُمْبِيكَ عَنْ تَفْصِيلِهَا بِبَيَانِ I will tell you each one in detail. ذَكَاءٌ Intelligence وَحِرْصٌ And devotion And being persistent وَاجْتِهَادٌ <coughs> And being diligent وَبُلْغَةٌ and that which suffices your basic needs. وَالصُحْبَةُ أُسْتَادٍ And the companionship of a teacher. Meaning to study with a teacher. وَطُولُ الزَّمَانِ And a long period of time. So in summary, Imam Shafi'i is saying that you will not truly attain knowledge. Even if you Google these lines in, you'll find them online, inshallah. You will not attain knowledge except with six. The ka'un, intelligence. <coughs> and intelligence is of two types. Some people are naturally intelligent, and that is a hibah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a gift from Allah jalla wa'ala. And some people need to work on their knowledge and the way they study and so on. Then that intelligence is muktasab, they attain it. So for example, you may find that in the beginning of Seek knowledge In the beginning of your journey You may find it difficult Maybe difficult to memorize Maybe difficult to understand And maybe difficult to summarize Lakin after you've been doing it For a certain number of years Months or even years You will find that you're Quicker in understanding things So the Sheikh says Rahimahullah The Imam says The ka'un wa sun And having hirs Being devoted constantly and being persistent in seeking knowledge. Knowledge is greedy. The Salaf used to say, if you give knowledge all of yourself, then it gives you a part of it. Imagine if you give yourself a part of knowledge, then it will give you what? Nothing in return. So you have to constantly be uh, devoted to seeking knowledge. Watch and being diligent and putting in hard work. Putting in a lot of effort when you're seeking knowledge. For example, you've studied this book now. Don't leave it there. Don't put it on the shelf and say, I've studied that book. La. You carry on. You carry on studying it. You carry on revising it. You carry on teaching it. You carry on studying, having study circles with your friends and your peers so that you do not forget. And you carry on trying to memorize it. Wabulgatun. 
and that which will give you the basic necessities of life so you don't have to ask people to, for for wealth and you have to have the companionship of a teacher meaning you have to have a teacher it is impossible to learn without a teacher it is impossible to learn Islamic knowledge without a teacher if you think that you can learn from books then you've got another thing coming. You will not learn from books. That's why a lot of these comedians that you see on social media, who have different social media accounts and record videos and so on, why have why are they? Yani, a, a, why are they? You know, when you look at them, they remind you of comedians. Why do people mock them? Because they haven't studied under scholars and students of knowledge and those that are qualified. They've picked up books and they think they've understood but in reality they haven't understood. zamani, And you need a long period of time. So don't think you finished Usul al in 10 gatherings. You are now qualified to give fatawa or you are qualified to be a alim or Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah or you're qualified to insult other people and accuse them of being awam and you're a student of knowledge. La. Knowledge has to make you humble. Knowledge has to make you realize that you don't know anything. The more you seek knowledge, the more you realize you don't know anything. That's why many of the scholars, you will find that simple masail that we think are simple, or masail issues that we think are simple, they say, Allahu A'lam. Whereas if we were to be asked, we'd say, Halal or Haram. Whereas they're saying, Allahu A'lam. Allahu A'lam. Why? Because of their knowledge. They know the level of the knowledge that they have. And they know the importance of giving fatwa. Lakin, it's unfortunate that we see, or it's sad that we see, methylene in the West, and in many places, like in more so in the West, due to the spreading, spreading of ignorance, or due to the widespread of ignorance, rather, we find that a person may study one book or two books and attend about 200 lectures, and he's Shaykh al Islam, Yahya ibn Ma'in, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Ali ibn al Madini, where he thinks he's now. The Shaykh of Shaykh al Islam of Jahu Ta'adil. And he talks about issues that he has no idea of. And he feels entitled for people to come to him and say, Al ilmu yu'ta wa la yati. Knowledge is, you have to come to knowledge and knowledge doesn't come to you, and so on. So the reason I gave you these lines is that, and the reason I gave it to you in the end of the book is so that you realize. That our journey has just started. Our journey has just started. Lakin, make sure now that you're on the path, make sure that you know that you're on a path to Jannah. You're on a tariq to Jannah. Tomorrow, you're going to be the scholars of this ummah. You're going to be the fuqaha. You're going to be the muhaddithun. You're going to be the imams. You're going to be those people that are given fatawa. Like in only if you take advantage of today. Only if you take advantage of today. And the lessons that you're in. And the knowledge that you're learning. And the books that you're studying. And be serious about it. It's excellent that you're attending class. Like in if you're in class for two hours. When you go home you need to revise for a minimum of three hours. If you're in class for an hour and a half, when you go home, you need to make sure you minima, you, your revision is no less than two and a half hours. What The effort you put in in class or the effort that you put in at home should be more than the effort that you put in class. Because in class, you're absorbing. That's good. But when you get, get home and you even listen to the recording, you're able to understand a lot more. A lot more. And when we were studying Khulasa Ta'adim Al-Ilm, one of the points I mentioned with the adab of the student of knowledge is that they should summarize the book that they're studying. And I don't think anyone, anyone has summarized it. I know probably the sisters, one or two or three or maybe more, has summarized it. But I don't think any of the brothers have summarized it. Please do prove me wrong. If anyone has summarized it, put your hand up. Nu'man. Jazakallah khairan. Allah yahfadak. Summarize, meaning all of the masail, all of the explanation and the masail that we studied. You've got it in a separate tafsir exercise book, and that you refer, and we're able to refer back to it. 
Excellent. Three, four, five. Tay, mashallah. That's good. It's better than having none or one. Yeah. So jazakum Allah khairan. If you think I'm harsh, wallahi, it's for your benefit. The reason I'm asking you is not to put any of you in the spot. Like, and this is a gathering of knowledge. This is a gathering of knowledge. And I wish to see every one of you succeed in their quest for knowledge. And I wish to see and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes every single one of you ulama who people will mention until yawm al qiyamah. Every time they mention your name, that they will say, Rahimahullah ta'ala.